today we are going to try and fit a larger motor into the E300. Um, we've got a 350 watt motor here. Uh, this is a ZY 1016, which is still a 24 volt uh, motor with a top RPM of 2750. Uh, that's running at 24 volts obviously uh, we're going to be over, over volting that so we should get more output uh, the output wattage is 350 watts and it can take 18.7 amps which is good because we're using lithium batteries it won't get as warm um, the original one uh, can do about 13 amps um, and if you put too much amps through it you'll burn it out now size wise this motor is a little bit deeper um, so I'm hoping we don't have too many issues when fitting it but we'll have a look and see how we get on the other thing is it didn't come with any connectors on the end so I might have to put some XT60 connectors on that let's see how we get on okay so I've got the lid off my E300 and as you can see I've um, still got my waterproof casing on and my mud guards and what we're going to do today is I'm going to disconnect the two 36 volt power packs I've got so that they're disconnected. I'm going to disconnect the motor which is that blue and yellow wire you can just see there and unthread it. It comes through a little hole with a grommet uh, down by the motor here and uh, feed that out. Undo these four bolts and remove the original motor and it's kind of a twist and drop down affair to get it to go through and then put the new one in place. Hopefully there's going to be enough. I've got a couple of inches there. I'm hoping there's going to be enough room to fit this new motor in. Um, and then rewire it back up. And as I said, I'm thinking about putting in XTC, XT60 connectors um, on the motor, uh, but I'll see what condition these ones are in. Um, but I'm going to be running higher ampage, so it might be an idea to get those changed over now. Um, but I just need to check the polarity of the motor first to make sure it's spinning the right way. So the next step is to drop down the razor's chain guard by removing the two screws, one and two, and then I can lower the chain tensioner and just lift off the chain from the front sprocket on the motor. So I've lifted out the two power packs, they've been disconnected from the ECU, and here is the cable that goes to the motor through the grommet in the side wall there which I fill up with hot glue to stop it from uh, leaking water and I have to note that the colours red and black do not line up with the colours yellow and blue on the speed controller so my negative is going to the yellow and my positive is going to the blue so I've got to make sure those are the right way around and I'm going to just unclip these by putting a small allen key into the little uh, keyway and pushing the clip out so that I can slide this motor out through the grommet. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got the chain guard out of the way. The tensioner, you have to push it down and then you can lift the chain off the front sprocket and just dangle it in front of that chain tensioner. I'm now gonna pull the cable through so that the motor cables come out of the main casing and come loose. This hopefully will give me enough room to rotate the motor by lifting the box up. So I'm going to rotate the motor uh, kind of anti-clockwise and then drop it down through the hole. Uh, I might need two hands for this. So the motor is now clear and all I did was rotate it and drop it down. Uh, so if you need the extra clearance you can just lift up the back to give you a bit of extra space which I'm probably going to do when putting the new one in. So now I'm going to reverse the process with the new motor. Okay, so the new motor's in there, but because of the lilt of the ears that hold the motor in place, they won't actually rotate and go over the top like the original one did. So I've mounted it underneath, which means it's straight, but I've lost um, maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 mils of clearance. Uh, the chain tensioner, this chain is a lot tighter on this one. Still got some slack, but what I had to do was to, uh, loosen the motor off, put the chain on first, and then lift it up and tighten it into place. But I've still got enough slack to get on with, and the tensioner's just working on the top side. Um, the cog is a little bit further out on the front sprocket, so we'll have to see how well that works. I may have to adjust where these holes are and push it back by 10 mil, just to try and straighten it up or five mil, just to see how it goes. But now what I'm gonna do is just wire the motor in, 
back through the grommet, attach the plug and make sure the motor's spinning in the right direction uh, before changing over these plugs to XT60s. Okay, so one final thought. The chain tensioner I've put underneath the bottom part of the chain because it was jumping off the sprocket where it's not quite aligned correctly. Um, just undo this nut here till it's uh, finger loose but not all the way off. That'll make the arm really loose. It makes it really easy to jump it from the middle to the bottom with the chain on with this motor. Okay, just undo that one, move the chain tensioner to the bottom and away you go. Okay, so with the motor in this downed position, um, the chain guard no longer fits. So I'm going to make a little adapter on the old 3D printer to um, fit those in place. Um, but yeah, because it's slung a little bit lower, uh, the, the bottom part of the chain at the front section is going to start knocking on that chain guard. So I just removed that for now. I'm just giving the chain a bit of a clean. Um, I've taken it out for a test drive. It accelerates much better than it did before. It still does the standard 24 miles an hour uh, on flat or inclined ground. It will go faster if you're obviously going downhill or you've got momentum built up. Um, but that's still the limits of the motor with 36 volts over, over voltage on this 24 volt system. Here's the cat. Um, but it's the acceleration and the torque that it's got is far better now. So it's got basically 40% more torque. Um, which is great so it gets me up to top speed a lot quicker and seems a lot happier which is great it also doesn't get hot which is lovely um, so there we go 350 watt motor in a 36 volt system um, all I've got to do now is just change that motor connector over to an XTC and it'll be able to uh, keep cruising for a lot longer I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions drop me a line thanks for your time <laughs>